Hi, David O'Dell here again. Today I'm going to show you uh, the basic fundamentals of how to set your line stake. Your lines for setting just a basic form. This is just a 2x4 for a driveway addition. I'm going to measure off my depth, my width here, which is 12 feet. So I want to put my, my line and the stake to the inside of the form. That way when I'm driving the stakes behind the 2x4, they're not getting interfered with the line. So let me show you how to do that. First, you're gonna need you're gonna need a sledgehammer about this size. This is about an eight pounder right here. Oh, we know we we want 12 feet here. I've overcut this dirt about three inches, so we got plenty of space for the two by four and the stakes. take a look over here here's 12 feet so that's going to be the inside edge of the form so the stake has to be to the inside of everything so this side of the stake comes down right at 12 so my line will tie here my form will be here nothing will touch that line Now we have the stake in at 12 feet. We'll do the other side the same way. Trying to hold this against that concrete on the inside edge. So that's the setup you want right there. Some people put the lines on the back of the form, which is uh, amateur style. And that here every stake you drive in interferes with your line that way so you really don't know what's going on hold it there again there we go twelve feet now i'm going to show you how to tie the line easy tie easy release Here's the way you tie them. You grab your string like so. Take a nice lead about so big so you can wrap. Put it here on the inside. Wrap. Bring this top over the top of the line. Now it's tight. Just tension. Tension alone keeps it tight. So with this way, the tighter you pull, the tighter the line gets on the stake. But if you let it loose, the line's just gonna drop with this particular tie method. There's some other tie methods that uh, won't move even if you loosen up the line. But this one, pretty good for just a quick form up. No, this line's no good. It's all knotted. But the idea is you come across here. Here's the level you want. So you could just bring it across, hold it on top of that, mark it. Then you can wrap it around. And there it is. And that's very tight. Now, when you go like this with the string line, it feels like a guitar string about right 
so here we got the string line up we're I got to cut a little more grass up there to get the form in behind there but that string's good to go one last thing we need to check we know our elevation is good here because we're meeting the sidewalk back here we need to put a level across from the driveway to this see what's going on so i'll just grab a basic level I'll just use a little two footer on a 12 foot straight edge see what it looks like So there's the bubble. I'm right on the string line where I thought I would like it at. And it's right now it's falling back towards the driveway just a little bit. So we'll leave it right there. That's about level with the lawn as well. Let's see what's going on over here. This driveway slopes this direction. Then what it does, it comes through this little channel. Then it hits this channel drain here. Water goes into this channel drain. They have a three inch drain. It goes across the lawn and it goes through under the sidewalk through the curb by the tire on my truck. So that's the drainage of this lot. That's how it's set up. So we're going to go with that same flow. Everything's going to go this way. All right, back. I just cleaned up the um, back side of that string line so I can get my board in. Now the next step is uh, finding the board that you're going to use and how you want to put it in, depending on how it's bowed, you know, crowned. So I'm looking down this board right here. It's got a big, about a three-quarter inch bow in the middle, and then it's also crowned about a half inch. So I'm going to put the crown up, and then I'm going to put the bow out. So that way I can stake my two ends. The center of the board's not interfering with the line because it's bowed out. Then all I had to do after I get stakes on both ends of this particular bow is push the center into the line and then uh, it'll never touch the line. Now, if I did it the other way with the crown in, it would be interfering with the line the entire time I'm trying to set it. So I'm going crown up, bow out. go see let's take a look at this end here you can see right here we've got a, some concrete for the footing of this wall that's always always a problem though eh, i just cleared it so we're good anyway so now we're right up against the line here tyler push that two by four the inside out to the line so we can show this uh bow yeah okay that's it now you can see the bow i was talking about that i that i visual that i just took a quick sight down the board it's about a half inch there in the middle so i can stake either end now push the middle out and the natural crown was i have it up the weight of the board itself is almost setting it down to the line but all i have to do is nail it high in the middle drive that stake down with the nail in take the crown right out so that's what we're going to do here you notice how I've laid the stakes out already on the back side. That way I'm not tripping over them. And I can walk along the inside here. And I just reach and grab them all in one move. Yep, there's another problem you gotta run. You gotta look at the stakes sometimes. You find nails in them like this. Better take them out before you drive them. They just get in the way. Spin your hammer like that, that's important. Okay, then what you do hold it at your height. Once you get the form, see how I'm going up and down? Once you get to the height you want, put your put your foot against it now, now it can't fall down. 
take your eight pound just lean it against the form that way when you're hitting it you're not loosening the stake the sledge behind it stabilizes everything from rattling loose come down to this end I already know that all I have to do is get this end right and the middle will have to come in now if you're using the two and a half inch or three inch wide stakes you can split this seam and put two nails one on each side it says I got these little inch and a half I'm gonna put one and one and it's kind of nice to do it that way also in case you have a twist in your two by four sometimes a two, a two inch or two and a half inch or here one board will be twisted one way one will be twisted the other way so they won't come together beautiful so you got to individually stake them sometimes now I like to wear my hammer on this side right here. I mean, they have these things right here, but you gotta you know, be real flexible to get your hands on your back, get them out. So I like to put it right here. Then you just go there, right there, you go like that. It's always nice to spin it. duplex six nails is what I'm using here any bigger net and these stakes right here would just split in half so that's all you can do with these things now we'll go over here to the middle you can see the ends are right on the line in the middle you can see it's setting high just like we sighted and it's also bowed out so now what we gotta do is push it to in to there Do that that's crucial then push this down just a little bit you can do that but it's pushing down see how it's pushing down it's springing back up i'll just push it down put my toe against it bam said and done now if you if you're still a little bit off you can take your sledge just tap the dirt, the base of your stake, and moves it right over. This form is pretty good. It will probably hold right now. But I'll throw a couple more in, just for fun. Get it started. I use a waffle end hammer so it doesn't slip off the nail. That forms in. Take that end over that concrete there. Right where the stake is, straight with the line. No, no, to the concrete now. Too close to the line, on your side. Right there. Nine feet. We've got nine feet, but I want the form to be, I want the form to be able to come out relatively easy without a wedge in there. So I'll make it eight foot eleven and three quarters. Then I got a little space. I can get it out real easy when I strip. Eight foot eleven and three quarters. You can always use a speed square on these but it's not real necessary on a three three and a half inch cut it's hard to go very crooked in that distance so basically you look at your guard you look at your guard here and here you line up with the cut where it says zero you look, you know, put that on your pencil mark that zero put it right on the pencil mark 
then look here look right here if that looks square then your cut's going to be straight and very nice it's a nice square cut so speed squares you know for amateurs but you know you gotta you gotta kind of know what square is to start with once you know what to look for you can throw away the squares There it is, that's ready to pour. Now you can stand back and look at it also. You have to verify that you like it. And I really do, so I'm gonna go with that. That's a basic technique, how to um, set a form. That's the easiest and best method that I've found. The line's always out of the way. The line stakes are out of the way. Everything goes real smoothly. Thanks, and uh, we're gonna put some more stuff up as soon as the stops jobs start rolling in a little more, and then we're just gonna keep putting them up. Have a good one. <laughs>